So I do have a few things growing here, although a little bit of grass found its way here when I added extra soil that was not potting soil. Now this bed has this system where I can lift this frame and in the summer I can put, instead of putting like some kind of plastic on top, I can put this deer netting or bird netting uh, because my idea was to have a strawberry bed like, but I ended up having a bunch of volunteers. Look at this. <laughs> it's still growing so I'm gonna let it go for a bit longer but that over there is celery that's what it is and it's not a cold weather uh, variety I can't can. believe the celery is alive I mean we even had snow and I guess after seeing this it had kind of sealed the deal for me they're just the best varieties to grow in our weather so why am I reinventing the wheel? I guess that for this year I need to make sure that I have my staples and things that I want to have in my pantry. And I'm gonna try not to buy any more seeds. So that will be an adventure. I have some volunteer uh, onions here. I don't know if you can see it. They're starting to sprout here. And now this one's I am going to dry and use for the goat. Now I wanted to do a quick disclaimer um, before I move on to the garden. The method that I'm using, it's based on some research about hotbeds. And it's not specifically a hotbed, I've adapted it to what I need since I'm off-grid. And I don't have the power to actually have grow lights or anything or I don't even have the room really to start seeds inside. Even if I had the power it really wouldn't be something I could do. So I have adapted a lot of different techniques and I made them into my own. My idea is showing you that there are ways to do it for free and that you can have an amazing garden, garden and you can store a lot of food and that you really don't need all the gadgets and all the things that you see on different videos that maybe for them it's worth the investment but if you're in a spot where you just want to grow your own food because you're tight in money or you just um, need to be ready think about what you have and what will make sense to you and don't really think that you need to have everything um, that you see me use to make it work if i'm using what i'm using it's because i got it for free uh, or you know it's something that is produced here on the farm like manure by our animals or you know I had wood and that I want to pick up from a farm for free so I build those garden beds and start somewhere start with what you have available near you um, and and then the things will start to show up because for some people the things that you consider amazing and needed for your garden for them it's garbage so you can totally reuse things that somebody else is ready to get rid of One of my favorite things to do in the mornings is gardening. It's one of the things I look forward to do in the spring and summertime. <laughs> Those are not my geese, they're just flying over us. Uh, I kind of want geese, but at the same time I don't know if I want them. They're kind of loud. And I enjoy so much a quiet morning gardening. <laughs> Sometimes the goats are loud. 
but it's not like a constant thing. All the weeds that I'm pulling right now, I am dropping them into my bucket. And you should see the ducks right now, they're trying to look inside my bucket like I would I was trying to hide these weeds from them. <laughs> But if I throw them on the floor, they wouldn't even look. Now, all this part of the cilantro and the um, parsley here, I'm going to harvest for us. And also for my bunny, who loves fresh weeds and fresh anything really from the garden. Now I cleaned this part which is maybe four square feet here to 34 and I'm gonna lift the soil. I mean you can tell that even though this is a tall garden bed we still have a lot of um, life in this soil. And even potatoes that would have sprouted eventually. Look, there's even more. But under this is a lot of um, straw and manure. If I can find that clip, I'll show you, but you can kind of see it by the texture. But it's already decomposing and turning into super good soil. I mean, these seem to be like roots. I don't know if you can see it, but they look like roots. But they're really, this is all made out of the same. It's done by the decomposition of straw. Now, I'm going to move things here. And I don't know if you can see from there, but there's a hole there that will go down into where the big logs are so this is the depth of my garden bed and by the way if you want to see how to make one of these beds for your own uh, garden I have a, a video where I share with you how I filled this in with what I call or people call garbage so I'll have that link on the top of the screen and in the description box down below. But basically, I dug, I don't know, maybe four inches down and I am going to put fresh manure, charge it with uh, a little bit of water and fertilizer, which I'm just doing to do an extra something, but you can only, I mean, you can always put just manure with straw or pine shavings, whatever it is that you clean your animal shelters and you bed it with, and then you can put water on top. And that way you're charging it and then the nitrogen, it will start to heat, the, heat things up. But it does need that. Now, if you do have uh, rabbit manure tea, that will heat it up even faster i do have to work on that and i'll probably do another part of the bed with charging it with rabbit manure tea but right now i am just going to do it with regular manure just to show you that it's possible i'll show you the readings on the thermometer as the days go by i love this i love finding <laughs> this kind of life in my soil that i made myself because i did put a little bit of potting soil on top of this bed to start planting but the rest is all decom decomposed things that i started about a year and a half ago so it really does work and with the more time that you that you just dump things here is once it's done you just dump things in there um the more or the better results you're gonna find. So let me go get some manure and then I'll show you what we're doing. This is some of the dirtiest decomposing, you can see it here, <laughs> uh, matter at the bottom of the goat pen, which means that this 
has the most amount of nitrogen and it has, once I wet it, it's gonna start to release the heat because of the amount of nitrogen that is in this dry straw hay patch that I just put down here. Now, somebody told me the importance of doing this with a watering can instead of a hose. I don't know what the deal is with that, but I said it's better to start this process with a watering can if you want to heat up a bit. Maybe it's an old wives tale, but I like to follow it. And I put that with a little bit of this Burmistera. You don't have to. I am just doing this because I have that and I had it for a couple of years and I've heard that it loses the, the I don't know, the efficacy or its power as the years go by. So that's why I'm doing it. And now I am breaking the almost done compost that was underneath putting it on the top and now I'm gonna do this other part and cover it again you can see it here like all this manure it was like the one that I just put under here but this was months ago so now it's decomposing and looking like this The boys are being extra, extra loud today, and I don't... The girls are quiet, I don't think anybody's in heat. But they just want my attention. Look at this. <gasps> this is so good. Woo. Let me go get more manure. And once again, I am getting the most disgusting bottom of the floor manure because as you can see it's still soaked in pee and this is amazing nitrogen and by the way uh, you could totally wear gloves <laughs> gardening gloves but there's something about touching the soil for me and touching organic things that helps me stay grounded and it keeps me happy so even though then I have gardener nails and I have to wash them and scrub them I know I hear you Taz I hear you love I'll cover back up and by adding the manure and charging it with the water we're gonna warm this bed up a little bit or at least this part of the bed one of the things I want to plant are onions and this is a seed tape uh, you've probably seen this at Walmart and um, this comes in the seed tape, which means that in each one of these, there's a seed. Oh goodness, I broke it. But the thing is, I want to try to grow this because this expired uh, December of 2017. So some people say, no big deal. Everything is fine. It's gonna grow. Some other people say, no, if they're that old, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna set it here. Cut. And then keep going. So I'm gonna keep doing this. And we'll see if they even sprout. Now, since I never used this, I was reading the instruction and it says, do a trench, place them, and then cover. But it also says that you're supposed to 
to water the seed tape before you cover it and that it needs consistent moisture for best germination. Now I got this potting mix, it's a seed starting potting mix. Um, and I'm just showing you so when we see results we have a better idea. But the idea is that it's mostly peat moss. It also is supposed to have some kind of a... I'm getting stuck in things here. It's also supposed to have some kind of uh, fertilizer, really slow release fertilizer. And remember, uh, even if, I'm gonna press them, even if this didn't have any kind of slow release fertilizer, after the seeds sprout, start having their first leaves and everything, um, Remember that we have a lot of manure under here, and that is a lot of the fertilizer that we need. So the seeds, or the roots, are going to go under looking for those nutrients, and they're right under the soil.